Hello and welcome. It's the Green Squire with tips for Cybrin. Starting off with the experimentals this time, the Megalith can reclaim, and I believe it's the only experimental to be able to do so. If you come over here and try to drop one of its eggs on reclaim like this, for example, this spider bot, it will walk on over to it. And if you see him getting plus 397 mass at the moment, and now it's trying to place its egg on the wreck, and now I am getting 647. So one fun fact is that this reclaims very, very fast. So a very useful strategy if you're on the front line and you want to reclaim something quickly. And speaking of eggs, what the heck is an egg? How do you use one? Well, it's actually very simple. You can see I placed one down earlier on top of the wreck that was there, and this is the egg. It basically just drops a egg with whatever you selected inside of it, and then it proceeds to build it. In this case, I'm building the T3 tank, but you can also build the anti-air, artillery, and engineer as well as flak anti-air and again you can see it finish right there so one cool fact is that you can place the egg and build it with the crab itself or if you're on the move and you need something on the front lines like say a bunch of these guys you can just drop the egg move on and you can tell other engineers to build it so you can build it with the crab itself again it's very fast i think six times as fast as a t3 factory or you can drop a bunch of these little eggs and have other engineers build them for you and one last tip for the megalith or the crab is that if you're being chased down by a faster experimental you might want to run backwards with it so it can keep all of its guns on the target but sometimes the pathfinding is a little bit wonky like if i tell it to go just a little bit behind it over here it'll take some time try to turn around now it's not having its guns toward the enemy so a way you can walk backwards while keeping the crab on target it is simply to let me stop this guy really quick is simply to queue up a bunch of move commands just slightly behind it and if you can see it is walking straight backwards it'll kind of stop to think about it every now and then when it gets to each waypoint but it gets the job done and now you can keep firing on target while you're doing a tactical retreat Moving on, Cybrans are the only faction to have gunships at every tech level. All factions have tech 2 gunships, and all factions except Seraphim have tech 3 gunships. And while the tech 1 gunships aren't particularly strong, nothing at tech 1 is, so they should perform fine at tech 1 stage, and none of the other factions have access to this. Additionally, the Cybrans are the only ones with area of effect damage on their gunships. Specifically, the Tech 2 and the Experimental have splash damage. And this, of course, comes in very handy against groups of units, so the Tech 2 can remain useful even into the Tech 3 stage if your opponent is grouping a lot of units. And an easy way to remember which ones have splash damage and which ones do not, Tech 1 is directly fire it skips tech 2 and tech 3 is direct fire so it kind of just bunny hops over direct fire area of effect direct fire area of effect and lastly on the topic of gunships the t3 heavy gunship not only can personally stealth but it also has radar jamming in it. So basically what radar jamming is, is if you can picture just kind of, you know, fog of war and you have radar blips showing your units, radar jamming will just put tons of fake blips on the map. So when these heavy gunships come in for an attack run, your enemy will see maybe dozens of blips and the Tech 3 anti-air defense will probably fire at those blips and miss. So that's basically a free first volley or an avoided first volley due to this radar jamming. And of course, the Soul Ripper also has personal stealth. The next few tips will have to do with land units. And I say next few tips because there's just so much going on with cyber units that we just have to look at them in depth. So starting off with Tech 1, the Tech 1 Land Scout can cloak. 
and this is different from stealth I remember I was confused when I first started but stealth what these guys can do what these gunships can do personal stealth this hides from radar so your opponent will not be able to see your radar signatures until they're right on top of you unless of course it's omni sensors but cloak hides from vision and this actually doesn't have a whole lot of usefulness because most of the time when you're running into enemy forces they're going to have radar nearby as well and his radar signature will still appear because it's not stealth it's only cloaking the only units in the game that have both stealth and cloaking which is incredibly deadly is the cybran commander with certain upgrades he can get and drumroll please the Seraphim Tech 1 Scout <laughs> for some reason. Continuing down the Tech 1 line, the Mantis have a very weak engineering suite, so they can't reclaim, but they can help repair things or help engineers construct things like point defense. And this can be very useful for building things quickly, especially in the early game when you have tons of Tech 1 spam running around. You can all help them spam up point defense relatively quickly. Next up is the Light Artillery, and this is as good a time to mention as any that Cybran in general are far less accurate than other factions, however they do generally have greater splash range. So especially with T3 Artillery, but all artillery, you won't be as accurate but the splash damage will still take out a lot of stuff around it. And what's special about this little guy right here is he has a stun weapon, so all of his shells stun units, which actually remains useful up through Tech 2 and even sometimes Tech 3. And it's especially useful against the Aeon faction's Auroras, because Auroras, as you guys know from my Aeon video, outrange all the other faction's tanks and they can just run away if you try to close the gap, but if you have some of these guys in, they can stun the Auroras so they can't run away. And lastly is this anti-air gun. This guy is the only anti-air gun they can fire at both air and ground. He can actually switch his fire mode to fire at ground targets when needed. Moving on to Tech 2, the Cybrans have the best mobile missile launcher in the game. Not only does it have a fast fire rate, but the missiles also split when they are hit by tactical missile defense. So this makes it easily the most capable at breaking through fire bases. And next up, the Cybrans are the only ones to not have any mobile shield generators. If it hasn't been apparent in this video already with the stealth abilities of this gunship, this gunship, and the cloaking abilities of the Tech 1 Scout, the Cybrans like to be sneaky boys. A lot of their technology revolves around not being seen. So it makes sense then that instead of a shield generator they actually have a stealth field system. So basically anything you see in this radius here will not appear on the radar. Unlike most of these units we've gone over already, it's not personal as in not only affecting the unit, but you can put a bunch of units in this field and they will also be hidden from the radar. Additionally, you can put one of these guys on a transport, load up the transport with other units, and then as long as this guy has his stealth field toggle on, everything in the transport will be hidden from radar. So that is a very, very good way to do some sneaky plays with the Cybrin. Moving on to the T2 rocket bot, it's not a particularly special Tech 2 unit in and of itself, but with its very long range, it does outrange a lot of units. And this is negated, of course, by radar. So as long as the opponent has radar, their units will be able to fire back at it without vision. However, if you do accompany the rocket bot with some of these deceivers, the rocket bots will be hidden from radar. So the rocket bots will be able to shoot farther than the opponent can see. So it's kind of what the Aeon faction does with their Auroras, in a sense that they outrange their opponents and the opponents can't fire back.
And last up for tech two is of course the fire beetle or the mobile bomb. It is the only suicide weapon in the game and you don't need that many of these to take out a commander. One thing to be aware of is that if they are shot and killed, they will not explode. So you either have to tell it to attack a target and let them get in range, or you can just run somewhere and explode them manually. They do not affect friendly targets, as you can see here, so you can run a bunch of fire beetles together, and when one explodes, the other ones can keep on running. Cybrin's Tech 3 units aren't incredibly special except that the Bouncer, the Tech 3 Mobile Air, can also switch its weapon from air to ground. The Tech 3 Brick, or the main battle tank, has torpedoes, so if the commander tries to hide from a brick rush in a pond, he will not be safe from the bricks. And the Loyalists actually do have a couple of cool tricks up their sleeve. The first one, if you can see over here, the suicide weapon, what happens when these guys die is that they will temporarily stun enemy units around them. And this isn't incredibly useful for longer range T3 versus T3 battles, but it is very useful in slowing down experimentals. So any units that can walk over other units like this guy can walk over units and crush them will be stunned upon crushing this guy because of the suicide weapon. It's also very useful against the Aeon Galactic Colossus and its tractor beams because if the Loyalist gets tractor beamed into the GC, it will stun it on death. And lastly, the tactical missile deflection not defense, very big distinction here. And I would show you guys an example, but if you've seen my UEF tips video, I think there's a better example in that than I could ever hope to show here. And let's just go ahead and see how good this thing is. So here we go, launch, as you can see, pretty wide radius. And there it goes. Couple fun facts, this thing is still regarded as a tactical missile, so the enemy shouldn't get a strategic nuke launched notification. Oh, and that's a very, very dirty play from the <laughs> loyalists that I totally forgot about, and that will backfire hardcore. <laughs> And we can see the devastation of that thing on my own base. So yes, these little devils right here can be very useful if you are under severe tactical missile attack or if the UEF commander is going with Billy Nukes. Can be very, very devastating. And of course, don't think I forgot about the Cyber Navy. Their cruiser can house air units. If you see this deploy button right here, that's what that is for. So any air units that are out of fuel or maybe low on health can come dock on this thing and repair and then deploy at a later point. I believe this is the only ship in the game to house air units besides aircraft carriers. Cybrins once again like to be sneaky boys and they have a counterintelligence boat at T2 that has this coverage range right here in dark brown which again hides any units in it from radar or in this case sonar and they actually have a Tech 3 sonar platform, which all factions do, but their sonar platform also has a stealth coverage. So two of their units have stealth fields, and if I click this guy right here, you see the dark brown, and then I hover over the sonar platform, the sonar platform actually has quite a large radius, if you can see both of them in dark brown, and not only that, but it can move. So you can attach this little guy to your navies. Having a few of these guys around, whether it's this Tech 2 one or this Tech 3 sonar platform, will hide your navies. And of course, this is a sonar platform. So you'll have intelligence wherever you go as well if this guy is in your navy. And lastly, of course, one of my favorite units in the game, the destroyer can sprout legs and walk on land. To do so, you need to click this button down here, which is off by default. Not totally sure why it's off by default, probably so the pathfinding doesn't break, but with that toggled, he'll come over to some land, and bam, look at that. 
and generally navies are about one tech better than their land counterparts so although this is a t2 destroyer it's very very powerful and can substitute for t2 artillery in some cases and i would say you can catch your opponent off guard but this is definitely not a secret it is a well-known trick the cybrans have but it is well known for reason it's very powerful very cool and you should definitely use it if you can and lastly for the units, I know we already went over the gunships briefly, but the rest of the Air Force has some tips too. So starting with the spy plane, it has free permanent stealth. So if we scroll out, you can see kind of the cancel icon above these guys. Spoiler alert, they also have stealth, but you can't turn it off on this guy, but that's fine because it's free. The air superiority fighter, as I just mentioned, also has the personal stealth toggle, and it's also the only ASF in the game to fire missiles instead of direct fire projectiles. And since these missiles track the targets, it makes the Gemini one of the most consistent DPSs in the game, as long as you're not fighting in mountains, in which case the missiles can sometimes hit the mountains and explode. The next tip has to do with the Hive Engineering Station and how it compares with the UEF Engineering Station. As you guys saw from my UEF video, the UEF has an engineering station that makes little drones that can fly around and help things and even go outside of the range that it shows on their engineering station. Unlike the UEF, the Cybrin engineering station doesn't make any other units, it's just a thing that helps other things inside of its radius, and it can be upgraded, as you can see here, to not only have a bigger radius, but also to make things build faster. So if I try to build something, like maybe an anti-air or something, you can see these hives spring into action and assist. These are useful because in their upgraded form they are incredibly fast so a lot of the time in late game you'll see just lines of hives and they should be upgraded but you can crank things out pretty quickly with a few of these hives. And the last couple tips have to do with the Cybran commander and in particular his upgrades. Cybran is unique in the sense that they are the only faction in which you have to decide between the basic gun upgrade and the tech 2 upgrade. All the other factions have them on separate arms, so you can have one, a decent gun, and another arm have the tech 2 upgrade. So unfortunately, you're going to have to choose between them here, and this will matter the most in early game. However, the Cybran Commander makes up for this in late game with the devastating microwave laser. This thing incinerates units and in particular enemy commanders because it's often used in tandem with the teleporter. So a lot of the times if Cybran players are on the back foot and don't see a likely victory through conventional means, you'll see them go for these teleporters and microwave laser also called Mazer, and you'll see them just try to teleport into the enemy base and get a cheeky little snipe because it only takes a couple of seconds with this upgrade to melt the faces off other commanders. However, I do just want to point out a couple of upgrades that don't get enough love, and that is the personal stealth generator on the back, so not the arms. You can use this with the Tech 2 and with the or with the upgraded gun, and this thing is fairly cheap. It only costs 650 mass, and of course, stealth hides you from radar, and this can be upgraded into personal cloaking. So as I mentioned earlier, the Tech 1 Scout can cloak, but it's not that useful because there's usually radar around. The Cybran Commander can equip both cloaking and stealth, and this makes him the top sneaky boy there is because with both of these, he can hide not only from vision, so units, any unit in the game cannot see him no matter how close he is, and no radar except for Omni can see him, and not the entire Omni range, just this little inner circle right here. So your stealth and cloaked Cybran Commander can be walking around anywhere along 
this range right here and beyond. And as long as he's not within this range of an Omni Sensor, he will be able to walk around with impunity. So one strategy I saw in a very entertaining Guile cast was someone got this microwave laser, got the stealth and the cloak, and then he just walked straight into an enemy base, granted with his weapons off, otherwise he'd expose himself, but he just walked into the enemy base right past all the front lines and stuff. And I won't spoil who ends up winning that match, but I will link it down below because it is quite entertaining. But yeah guys, as I prepare to maser this Seraphim commander in the face, I think this will just about wrap it up for this video. If you haven't already, make sure to check out the other faction tips videos I made for a style similar to this one, and of course, leave a comment down below if you think I forgot anything. But yeah guys, as always, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more to come.